I am Richard Burroughs. Um, I'm 31. I may look 24, but I am 31 and I am a photographer uh, by trade. Great. Um, can you, uh, you know, I've known you, Richard, since you were a young high school student here at the High School of Fashion Industries. So can mm -hmm. you start out by just telling us a little bit about your journey as a student here to maybe let's start out and talk about your education. Um, I believe my education at fashion was just, it was really important to me because I was able to choose where I wanted to go. And my mom always, like when I applied to fashion and every other art school in the city, my mom would ask me, why do you want to go into the city? Why do you want to go so far from home? And I would tell her it's because there's no, art schools are out there. They're not in Queens as abundant as in the city. And so I was choosing for myself and I was choosing for myself to be happy in something I do. And then after you uh, graduated from fashion, where did you go? And I know your path is is sort of windy, and I think it's so it's such an interesting and real um, story about what happened. So can you tell us a little bit about your educational path after high school? So I was one of those artists who were like, I love art, but I don't want to learn anything else a little bit. So my grades struggled. Um, and I really wanted to get into Pratt. And that was like the school that I really wanted to go to. And I just, my grades did not yield my path for that. And, but the people at Fashion, especially um, Miss Sia Body, but her last name has changed now. Uh, she really pushed me to figure out different routes I could go. And so I went to, Kingsboro um, College for a year and I really like worked hard and some words that my aunt told me was uh, you're gonna go to that school and they're gonna think you're not as capable as possible and you can just show them how capable you are so it was a good stepping stone for me to figure out that I need to take accountability for things that I do and once I got that 4.0 average I tried to transfer into Pratt and I also was in a program called SEEK, which has sister programs in SUNY called EOP, and then in a private school, HEOP, so Higher Educational Opportunities Program. So I applied through there and I was able to get in and I wasn't able to pay for Pratt. And it's like a $200,000 scholarship. So they gave me an 80% discount, which was amazing. So, yeah. And, um, do you feel like after fashion you were well prepared for Pratt? Um, you know, do you think you were ready for um, the level of art school that Pratt is? Um, one thing about fashion, when I was there, I got a lot of opportunities to go to places. So one thing was there was a Cooper Union Saturday program and that was offered to us as students. And I jumped on that. It was an eight hour class outside of school on a Saturday and I went there for three years and they pushed me to like try to get into Cooper, but I wanted to get into Pratt. But I feel like, as I said, like showing up is if you show up to like your opportunities, it'll help you blend your skills to like really be prepared. So coming from fashion, I really had the opportunities to help me, um, help me get the tools to like work at, at Pratt. Right. And then what, and then how did you, your path from Pratt to your career as a professional photographer, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I thought I was going to be an illustrator and I did go to Pratt for illustration, but when I was at Fashion, we have to take photography <laughs> for like one semester and that like blew the door open, like just like completely exploded all over the place. And when I was applying for Pratt, I didn't know if I wanted to do illustration or photography and I chose illustration because I have been doing it for so long, but as I was there, I took every opportunity to um, take photography classes. And then I turned 21 and I took some classes at the International Center of Photography and I was at a bar and there was a snowball effect. I just started taking photos of things that I liked and people started hiring me to um, photograph events. So, um you what are some of the early careers you had as an event photographer um i know that some of the companies some companies hired you to come in and take pictures of their events can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that 
Well, it became a word of mouth uh, kind of uh, moment at the start. And I would photograph for different promoters and they would have, they would be a company themselves. So I would shoot for different bars, um, a bar named Splash, and uh, that turned into a, they had connections to a hotel called the Out Hotel, which is now closed. But I used to photograph there at their mega club when that was happening in the early 2012. And after that, it, I, I started interning at Time Out New York um, due to connections at the International Center of Photography, and that gave me spaces to access different events and different parties that are happening throughout the city. Um, and yeah, it, it was it was really just like from a small space, uh, just a, a, a bar to it became me working at Time Out New York, and then eventually I started working for Absolute Vodka. Okay. Um, what kind of advice would you give a student who's maybe interested in being like a freelance photographer or an event ph photographer? Advice? Um, you're, you're gonna need to socialize and I know it's very difficult. There's one class I took at Fashion, it was called Business of Art and they told me if I can't look them in the eyes, look, th look at their eyebrows. That helps, and then also kill them with kindness. Especially if you're young, you are you are not intimidating. And so, if you kill them with kindness, even if they say no to a photo, you walk away and say thank you so much. They will feel bad, and then they'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, that's good though. Um, I'm happy to hear you um, you uh, learned something in the business of art class. That's exciting. I did. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we had an event where you were the photographer. Um, it was a, um, an event, Alicia Keys uh, was the, um, was the MC of that event and you took, uh, photographs at that event. And I remember that the, um, the main organizers of the event couldn't say enough about how amazing your your images were from that event and one thing they kept saying is that you take a really unique perspective um, of you were able to capture um, Alicia Keys and like all of the people around her and the students and and can you talk a little bit about sort of your artistic approach when when taking images at um, these events to make you I mean mm -hmm. clearly you had a different approach than what they had ever seen <laughs> that was that event and uh, the main organizer, she put, it went from just photographing the rehearsal to, oh, you're the main photographer very quickly. And it was a little scary, but I attribute that to, I used to shoot for free this one party um, and it was just a drag competition. And I would be on the, I would be on the floor with, when the, when the drag queen would start lip syncing, I would take photos and I would, it was like a dance at a certain point. And it was like really just being a like enveloped in what you're doing. When I photograph um, people and events, I stay still and I look around and like my peripheral vision is like my key. And so I feel the beat of the space and I understand where things, I perceive where they're going. Um, so it's really about analyzing. It, it takes a long time for that to come, but the more you do it, the more you'll, your, your prowess will like kind of grow of understanding what's happening in the space that's behind me. Or if I walk by someone and I see that, oh, they have a beautiful dress and they seem important or someone's talking to them, I'm not gonna go for them right now. It's like a strategy, it's a strategy game. I'm just like, all right, she got her drink. All right, I think it's time, I think it's time. You go, you pounce and you retreat. <laughs> Okay. That's like, yeah. that's that's fantastic. Um, it shows how many years you've been doing this, and you've picked up these really. Um, it's almost like intuition because your photos I, are very intuitive. I mean, they're really incredible. They really are. Um, um, you know, so much has changed during the pandemic, and I mean, mm -hmm. we're not having events like we used to. Um, how has the pandemic shifted? Um, your job and how you're approaching things? Well, kind of going back when I was at Pratt, um, 
when you're in college, you have freedom. And when I say freedom, it's you have an advisor that tells you what classes you need to take, but there's some, a lot of flexibility within that. So I chose to take video classes. I chose to take um, different uh, After Effects uh, graphic classes that were elective, but I thought they were close enough to photography or what I'm doing for work that it's like right on the cutting edge. Like you, when you hire a photographer, you want them to kind of do video as well. You want them to know how to edit video. And so during the pandemic, um, I was hired by uh, Bob the Drag Queen and um, Peppermint from Girls Drag Race to, they were doing a queer black town hall where they were speaking about Black Lives Matter and um, Black Trans Lives Matter. And I was the one who was editing these panels from an hour and a half to 30 minutes, which was terrifying, but it was great. Um, so having many different skills really will help you as you grow. You need to know where your profession is moving and it will still stay like if it's just, if it's photography it, it's going to stay there but it may move a little bit to like moving images or stop motion but you want to know what that is to like grow with it um that's awesome and great advice i'm also kind of thinking about um you know, you haven't mentioned it yet, but I'm going to make you talk about a little bit about your, your teaching career as well. And okay. because I've known you all throughout, obviously I've known you since you were a youngin, but okay. you know, it was very quickly within that you started teaching um, mm -hmm. through ICP. So, you know, do you want to talk about what drew you to not only be this amazing freelance photographer, but also to then feel a need to, to teach as well? Mm -hmm. um, I used to take photography at ICP and I'd always be around there and as I continued to shoot outside, I mean out in event photography, it just felt, um, I felt alone sometimes. I felt like I didn't have a lot of the community. You have your people who are competing against, of course, but um, when I go to ICP for events and functions, um, it just felt nice being around other creatives. And so I think my first teaching assistant job was at fashion um, and it was just such a joy to come back and like be in the dark room but I really found this this interest in me to guide young people or guide art I mean guide other artists because when I was younger I, yes I got to go to fashion at, uh, at uh, when I was going to high school but I wish I had it for a longer period of time and the more I teach I feel that Art is something that is so integral to how we think, how we approach things. And it needs to be said that art allows us to be a little bit freer. And so I like guiding artists. I like just like, you have the skill in like moving you along and seeing where you go. I'm not telling you to go this way, but I can see where you're going that way and I want to help you get there. So, so you kind of are between two careers right now. I mean, you are fully engaged in two careers kind of at the same time. Um, and luckily your events happen at night and your teaching happens during the day. Um, so you're not getting very much sleep, um, but <laughs> um, do you just kind of, I think to kind of um, sort of round this off, I, I'm wondering sort of where do you see yourself maybe in five years or down the road? Do you see yourself more headed towards teaching? Do you see yourself more headed towards um, expanding your your career in event photography? What do you see? Funny thing happened when I started event photography. I made strict rules for myself and one of them was I will stop doing event photography at 30. And uh, oh. Fortunately, a pandemic hit and I stopped doing event photography. So I don't believe I'm going to stop doing it in general, but as I've, there's just so much freelance that comes within um, event photography. And this year off from it has really shown me my worth. And when I go back and when things do go back, um, I'm gonna have a different perspective on how to like voice my worth because Photography can be, it can be one word photography, but if you're photographing for a bar, or you're photographing for a clothing company, you are marketing. So I should be paid for marketing. Also, branding. I need to 
learn how much my worth is. And one thing I could say to everyone is that if someone comes to you for work, it's not that you're desperate for work. You're, it's a two person battle here. They wanted you for a reason. And so you also have power within that statement in that in that agreement. So you should know your worth and um, really push for it. I love that. I love that. I'm so happy that you you know that now. And I think a lot of that's a hard thing for a lot of artists to learn, frankly, because it's almost mm -hmm. like it's our our passion, our love, and we're like, yeah, I'll do it for not enough money because I love I would love to do it, but like we need to stop doing that. So we totally do. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love that you're you've discovered that. So um is there anything else that you want to add um that I haven't covered? I feel like we've done the whole history of Richard Burroughs in some ways. A little bit, little slice of it. A little bit. I mean the one thing could be I did not do the full four years of Pratt <laughs> that I could say of. And that really changed a lot of things. Um, I was supposed to graduate in 2014, but I didn't because um, I was under a lot of stress. My mom happened to have a surgery that she decided not to tell me about. So that stressed me out more. So I just kind of like tanked a little bit. And I felt that nightlife photography in that time, I was really stable. And I, I did believe that Pratt taught me a lot but right now I, I just needed to walk away. And when I was taking teaching serious, more seriously, um, I needed that bachelor's to start that ball rolling. And you can only go so far in certain spaces and certain routes. Um, and I, when I was talking previously about my worth, I didn't know my worth. And so I was getting jobs, and, but I wasn't getting the, the, the pay that I wanted. And I didn't have the voice that I have now to express that and advocate for myself. So I went back to school. And the interesting thing about going back to school four years later and like working in the real world, I realized school is, I'm paying you. And I had so much more respect for myself that I'm not gonna take this person telling me, oh, you know, it's gonna make my job harder. Well, this is your job, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm paying to come here and learn as much as possible. And so I fought for that. And it was a very interesting, du uh, not duality, but view on being there when I started and just being like really just excited and making some great decisions and not so great decisions because I was young. I didn't know the value of college and the value I had over it um, and the power. Um, and so coming back, I really took my education very seriously. And so once I graduated and I started to, uh, to become a teacher, a full-time teacher, it really helped me see my event photography in a different light too, because I'm going to a school where I'm paying almost $200,000 in some capacity. And I need, to, I need to show that. I need to be proud of that. I need to move with that. Um, and always, and one thing else, always continue challenging yourself to evolve and evolving doesn't mean changing yourself completely it's like honing a knife you're a beautiful knife right now in 10 years that knife needs to get a little sharper or get a little more rigid or change a little bit it needs to shift with the world you can still have the same message but you need to also have that message explore what the world is becoming